So there I was, this little lad about seven years of age and um, my brother had a guitar and my mother brought home a guitar from a jumble sale and we had a... We had a great record collection in the house and I remember hearing this Beatles album. I think it was called With The Beatles and there was this riff that went... did a bit like that and I learned to play it just by listening to it and by pulling the needle off the record and putting it back down and eventually found that noise and the one thing I did nearly every day was pick up a guitar by the time I was 17 I could play finger style guitar in a sort of folk way things that sounded a bit like this sort of stuff. It's called finger picking. And on my way to work, um, I uh, crashed my motorbike and had a spinal injury, which was a complete spinal injury and affected my hands and arms a little bit, my arms a bit, as well as my legs and my balance. So technically I became a member of this new community, a disabled person and um, was dependent upon a wheelchair for the rest of my life. The idea of getting around in a wheelchair, that grew on me and I realised that A, I was still alive, B, I was young, C, I had a life ahead of me, but it was really, really distressing not to be able to use my hands and my fingers because that was my, as I viewed it then, that was my creativity. That was what made me different, what set me apart. I could play the guitar. And having a spinal injury and realising I couldn't use my hands meant I couldn't play the guitar. Um, and I really couldn't. There was no two ways about it. Anyway, years passed. Not that many years and I was discharged from hospital. And there was this really big inner conflict going on. And the conflict was, I knew the sounds and I knew the music and I knew the guitar music and I knew how it would be played and I could visualize it but I could never hear it so it went on in my mind and it was never allowed out into the atmosphere it was never in the air and I had a guitar on the wall at home and I knew I couldn't play it but the the pain of not being able to play it and the desire to need to see if I could find a way that conflict really made me attempt and my old chap was a, a blacksmith. He adapted a guitar with a big handle on the top here to enable it to be supported. And we could support it on a table. I got a piece of metal tube that I put on this finger and uh, put it on quite hard so it stays, it stays still and it's tight. Um, and I realised that I could make a sound by tuning the guitar a particular way. At this stage I nothing, knew nothing about lap guitar, nothing about the sort of music I play nowadays, or indeed how to play. But out of ten times, trying to play the guitar ten times, maybe eight times, it was really bad. I continually had, and I still do sometimes, and I think all professional artists do this. We still have those conversations where we say, am I playing this damn thing or not? Is this really music I'm creating? Is this really my thing? Is this really my art form? And I'm a professional musician. And it would be, um, it would be dishonest of me to say that's been an easy journey. But then there's no artist 
alive that hasn't had a really difficult in some ways and emotionally challenging journey to produce their art, to produce their thing. And their thing for me is playing this guitar. Thank you.